number 10 first. This is not a multiple choice question. We have to do all four parts of number 10. They are four separate questions. How could each of the following atoms react to achieve a noble gas configuration? All right, so we're gonna start with iodine. All right, 10A. So iodine is where on the periodic table? Look on your periodic tables on your desks. 53. It is number 53. Very good. What group is that? What group is iodine in? 17. 17. So iodine is in group 17. What does that mean? It's a noble gas. Not a noble gas. It's a halogen. What? How many valence electrons does it have if it's in group 17? 17. Not 17? Seven. 7. Okay, so 7 valence electrons. This is asking us what does iodine need to do to achieve noble gas configuration? What does that mean? What group is a noble gas in? Anybody know? This is where we took our test last week. What group are the noble gases in? 18. 18. Okay. So if they're in group 18, how many valence electrons do they have? Eight. Does that ring any bells? What does everyone on the periodic table want? Everyone wants eight valence electrons, right? Yes. We should remember this from Monday. Yep. What's Monday? We, we talked about this Monday, yeah. So, if iodine has seven valence electrons, what does it need to do in order to get noble gas configuration means have how many? Have eight, right? So we need to gain one more electron in order for iodine to have eight. Does that make sense? Yes? A little bit? So the answer to 10A is iodine gains one electron. All right. Now, for strontium 10B, where is that? On the periodic table. Where is it? All right, go ahead and look at your periodic tables. Find strontium. Oh, it's periodic. Number 38, which is in group two. Group two. So what does that mean? What does that information tell us? It's the alkaline. Alkaline earth metal, but also what is it telling us about this question, pertaining to this question? If it's in group two, we automatically know how many valence electrons, right? Two. Two. And I'm going to abbreviate valence electrons here for VE negative. All right, don't think I'm throwing another term at you, it's just valence electrons. So if we have two valence electrons in strontium, then what am I, what do I have to do to get the noble gas configuration? Think about our logical squirrel. We have two take. We could add six or we could take two away. Hold on. So a squirrel that's trying to cross the street, if it takes two steps out, it has a choice of going the six steps to finish it or the two steps back. I need you to stop knocking. I hear you. You need to wait. Okay, so we have a choice of six steps this way or two steps back. It's easier. It takes less energy to just go the two steps back. In this case, less energy to lose two electrons than it is to gain six. All right, so the answer to this is going to be what? Strontium does what? Very good. Strontium loses two electrons.
right, so now you guys can take time to finish uh, 10C and 10D by finding nitrogen and krypton on the periodic table, finding what group it's in, and then finding its valence electrons. All right, so number 11, okay, we're going to start with uh, aluminum 3 plus, which looks like this. It looks a little wonky on uh, Google Classroom because we can't have the superscript, but this is how it's meant to be written, AL3 plus as a superscript. All right, y'all with me? Yes, we're ready for 11? Yes. So... Let's refresh. Electrons are what charge? Positive. No, not positive. Protons are positive. Negative. Electrons are negative, okay? So, if I have three positive, what does that mean in terms of electrons? Any ideas? So, if we think about, if I have three negative friends. They're bad influences on me. They're negative influences, right? And I get rid of them. I become more what? Positive. I become more positive. So in this case, that's what aluminum is doing. If aluminum gets rid of three electrons, it becomes three positive. So when you see three positive, that means loses electrons or loses three electrons in this very specific example. Does that make sense to everyone? It's a little backwards from what you might think because we associate plus with gain and negative with subtract. Um, but in this case, we are losing three electrons and that's how we get the three positive. It's because we have three more protons than electrons. That's why it's written like that. What's it asking us for? Write the electron configuration for the following ions. So, no, not the answer. All right. Not the answer. Is that the electron configuration? No, no it is not. But where's aluminum on the periodic table? I want to know what its atomic 13. number is. 13. Atomic number 13. Do you all see it on your tables? Yeah. Did you find it? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, it's atomic number 13, which means... We have 13 protons, right? That's what the atomic number is equal to. Yes? So if I have 13 protons in a neutral atom, a.k.a. the positives cancel out the negatives, right? How many electrons would I have? If I start with 13 protons, I have how many electrons? If it's neutral, they have to what? Be equal. So how many electrons would I have? Okay, so what number is that? 13, okay? So, we start with 13 protons, which means we have 13 electrons, but this is an ion where we did what? Lose three. We lost three. So we go from 13 to what? 13 minus three is 10, right? You all following that so far? So what element on the periodic table has 10 electrons? You, you said it. Neon. Neon, right? How do I know which element has 10 electrons? By the um, atomic number. Atomic number, right? Because in a neutral atom, the electrons equal the protons, which equal the atomic number, right? So this, when we're writing our electron configuration, Al3 positive is going to be the same electron configuration as, what would you say? Neon. Neon. I'm just putting that in funky brackets because I don't want you guys to think that aluminum turns into neon. It just has the same electron configuration as it, okay? So now, refresher on electron configuration, even though you guys should be pros after how much we practiced before, all right? What do I really start with? I'm all, all the way up in the left corner, and what do I start my electron configuration with? 1s. 1s, and how many columns are in the s block? 2. 2. So I write 1s2. What's after that? 2s. Wait, 2s2. Very good. 2s2. There's nothing else in the first period. So we go down to the second period, 2s2. Then what? Um, 
So keep going across. 2P6. Perfect. 2P is our block on the right hand side, and there are six columns in the P block. So our little number is six. It, does that get us to neon? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So that's our electron configuration for uh, 11A, aluminum 3 positive. Now for 11B, we have SE2 negative. So go ahead and right now I want you to find SE on the periodic table. Found it? What, uh, what's the atomic number? 34. 34. You guys all see it? Yeah. Good. So it's number 34 on the periodic table. It is selenium. Um, so just like we did up here when we had to figure out what 3 positive meant, what does 2 negative mean? Look at what we wrote for 3 positive and try to figure out what, we're gonna, what that means for 2 negative. So... 2 negative means what are we doing with electrons? Adding. We're going to be gaining 2 electrons, all right? So Positives I'm mean losing electrons, right? This one's so this is going to be gaining 2 electrons. Because just like if I were to add negative friends into my life, then I would become more negative, right? So here, this person is gaining two bad friends, all right? And they are more negative for it, all right? Electrons are bad people. So, I know we already said it, but what's my atomic number for selenium? 34. So how many electrons am I starting with? 34. But then I'm doing what? Gaining two. Gaining two. So 34 turns into 36, right? Makes sense? So which element on the periodic table is number 36? Krypton. I mean krypton. Krypton. Very good. So what does that mean for my electron configuration? It's going to be the same as who? It's going to be the same electron configuration for krypton, all right? All right, so we're going to go through this again because this time we're going to go through the D block and I want to remind you of the special rules we have in the D block, all right? So what do I write first? We always start in that top right corner, uh, top left corner. Sorry, I'm backwards. So what do we start with? So 1s2. 1s2. Then 2s2. Yeah, I meant 6 2p6, right? There's six columns in the P block. So when you go the whole way through, you're going to write six. Then we drop down to 3s2. Good job. 3p6. 4s2. 4s2. Now this is the funky part, right? What happens in the D block? 10. There's 10 of them, but what else is different? We don't go off of the period number, we go off the period number minus one, okay? So we're not gonna write 4D10 like we did in the other ones. What am I gonna write? 3D10, good job. And then what's next? We go into the P block. Does the P block follow the D block rule or does it follow the S block rule? S. Very good, so what am I gonna write? Four. There we go. And that takes us right to Krypton, right? So this is how you're going to solve uh, 11C and 11D as well, all right? All right, so number 12. Number 12 says, in what way is an ion the same as its parent atom? All right, so yesterday we went over uh, one through nine and one of the questions asked us, in what ways are ions and atoms different? Do you guys remember what makes them different? What distinguishes atoms from ions? 
Not that they're positive and negative. That's cation and anion, right? So atoms are what? Do they have a charge? No. No, they're neutral, okay? And ions, do they have a charge? Yes. So ions are either cations that are positive or anions that are negative. Um, so we know that atoms... Our new, er, yes, atoms are neutral and ions have a charge, but what did we change from being an atom to being an ion? What are we talking about changing the whole, this whole section? We've been talking about what specifically? Hmm? The charge, but what are we changing in order to change the charge? Think about, okay, what is the atomic number equal to? Huh? All right, you're so close. Why are we tiptoeing around the word? Valence what? Electrons, right? So this whole section, all we're talking about is electrons, right? We're changing the number of electrons to either gain them and become negative or lose them and become positive, right? So what's different about an atom and an ion is what? The, elect the number of electrons, right? I can be aluminum and have 13 protons and 13 electrons, I'm neutral, I'm an atom. Or I can be aluminum and have 13 protons and 10 electrons and be positive and be an ion, right? So in this case, they're asking what's the same about them? So if we're changing the electrons, what are we not changing? Protons and neutrons, right? So protons, And neutrons stay the same. For atoms and for ions. Okay? Protons and neutrons stay the same. We never talk about changing them in this chapter because all we change are electrons. Okay? Does that make sense? Pulling teeth a little bit to get to the words, but yes? Whether we have an atom or an ion, they stay the same. No, wait. What's the answer? Um, that was an answer. What's the answer? I thought that was an answer. That's what is the answer? What did we just say? Protons and neutrons stay the same. Yep. All right, and number 13, the last question. To achieve noble gas configuration, a phosphorus atom will form a P. Three negative rather than a P5 positive. They want to know why. Okay? Logical squirrel. If the logical squirrel goes out five steps, it could either go what? To get to eight or to get to zero, what does it have to what are its choices? It could go three steps this way, or it could go back five steps this way. It came out five steps. Now there's a car coming. It has to make that choice. You know how they always stop in the middle of it? Go crazy, right? So we're five steps out, three steps away from this curb, five steps away from that curb. What is the logical thing to do? To go the other three steps in this direction, right? So that represents gaining three electrons and going back represents losing five electrons, okay? So we already identified it makes more sense to gain three electrons than it does to lose five, right? That makes sense, everyone? The answer here to our why question is why. What do you think? Because we can't just say it makes sense. That's kind of a, a BS answer, right? Because it wants to use less energy. Perfect. It takes way less energy to gain three than it does to lose five. That's the perfect, an uh, perfect answer. Did it just take less energy? Yep. It takes less energy.